Jim mentioned, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that verse. I've quoted that verse. I've taught that verse. And yet, Hmm. at times, when I'm really having an intrusive thought, I'm like, how do I take this captive? Mm -hmm. What do I do to it? How do I make it obedient to Christ? Because the emotion um, that's tied to the thought, like the feelings, maybe it's a feeling of fear, anxiety, um, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, sometimes that's screaming so loud that it's really hard to settle down into what this verse is instructing me to do. Yeah, I was just listening to you guys talk, and I think what's super fascinating is the description of the events that the both of you were kind of working through really does have an absolutely Edenic kind of echo to me in this sense. Um, I think it's super, super important for us to always test every thought with the validity of the truth, right? And what do I mean by that? One, in your situation in the bathroom, like that type of thing, I think safety is always the most important thing. And so I just think about like, if it was my daughter, if it was Britt, my wife, I'd be like, get out. Like, if you have that, trust your discernment and then pay attention to the pattern though. I think it's fascinating that Chaz came back in and said, hey, I kind of had this weird feeling, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Right, so back to your mystery thought, we have a very real Holy Spirit who is our paraclete, our helper, our guardian. But what the Holy Spirit is consistently going to do is to guide us in the pathway of truth. Mm. You know, and so we have a gift in other brothers and sisters in Christ who are able to speak to, who are able to identify patterns for us. I want to go back to Eden, and especially with this intrusive thought idea. Um, think about what the serpent does with Eve. The first thought, up until this point, the thought framework for Adam and Eve is guardrailed by the truth of God's word. But what the serpent does is present an intrusive, a thought that ought not be there right? A thought that is contrary to the truth of God. But what Eve and Adam don't do is go back to the source of truth. Mm. They entertain a thought. And that entertainment of the thought becomes a curiosity, which turns into a crisis in their lives. And it's not that the thought itself is is improper, especially after the fall. Like we're going to have all kinds of crazy thoughts and ideas, and it's going to feel um, dis- dysregulating for us. But the question consistently as believers, as Christians, people being led by the Holy Spirit, is to go back to the source of truth. I want to get into the Second Corinthians passage, but I always have had this thought, Lise um, and Jim, why didn't Eve and Adam just say to the, to the Nakash, the Hebrew word is for the serpent, that's a great thought. Hold up one second. Let's go grab Yahweh. Or better yet, tell the serpent in Genesis 2 or Genesis 3, like, If you have questions, go ask God yourself. Go ask him yourself. Absolutely. And the other interesting detail is that in Genesis 3, we're being told that um, there's this indication that it was routine for God to walk with Adam and Eve in, and the connotations of the Hebrew language there is there's a routine to it. And the goal of the walk didn't have a destination in mind. It was leisurely. So there's plenty of space. It was relationship. It was relationship. Yeah, Yeah, you're Mm -hmm. not trying to get to your destination. You're trying to establish a quality of relationship in between the walk that's happening. Um, And so again, going back to the source of truth, is this, and you kind of did that with the bathroom scenario. It's like, wait a minute, I had this feeling. Chaz kind of affirmed it. I'm in a place that might not be safe. And then identify, okay, are there patterns? Um, when we get to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and it's a, a passage that's quoted all the time. Let me go ahead and read it for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 4. Um, Paul says this to this church in Corinth. Since the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. If you're circling or taking notes, you want to highlight that word stronghold. He says this, we, which I think is is interesting that it's second person plural, right? Like um, the, the we idea of it, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Okay, what are these strongholds? These strongholds, I think, are in this context, thoughts that are contrary to the truth of God. Mm. So one of the questions that we wanna ask is, are the emotions, the intrusive thoughts that we're experiencing as we're evaluating them, are they obstacles that are actually setting Mm. us up against the knowledge and the wisdom of God? And if there are obstacles that are setting us up against the knowledge and wisdom of God, these are things like what you said, Jim, that you watch the bird and you're like, bye, see ya. (laughs) You don't belong here, Mm -hmm. right? Um, the, The phrase taking captives, it's actually a military, it has a military context to it. And the picture is prisoners of war. 
Um, you would see this in the ancient world all the time. Mm. You know, prisoners, prisoners of war, super important here. Paul is addressing the thought, not the person. The thought that is against the wisdom of God is actually attempting to take the person and make them a prisoner. Hmm. What Paul is saying is, don't let the thought make you a prisoner. You actually, by the power of the Holy Spirit, have the availability to properly and appropriately address the thought. And if the thought is against the wisdom of God, you take that thought captive. Instead of letting that thought hijack you. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. 